initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're hopping back in the Crucible and looking at the second new next generation console, the PlayStation 5. The one I was highly anticipating to blow the shit out of Xbox Series X just given the, the last generation's history. And we have the expert here to see if this was the case. We have the illustrious Jackson Clark. Hey, exciting times, Charlie. Exciting times. This is, it feels like all of mankind history has led us to this point. We're, we're finally able to take the PlayStation 5 out of the box and see what it's all about. Yeah, since the discovery of fire by the cavemen, it was always leading up to this moment. We were always born to evolve into gamers as our final form, the apotheosis of our species. Yeah, it's, it's truly beautiful. Uh, about the machine though, Charlie, what do you actually think about the look of the machine? Because that's actually one of my, I guess, main qualms with with the playstation i know we're kind of stepping off into negative territory almost immediately <laughs> but uh it, it's fucking it's a it's a huge machine it's giant i like it it's it's like a monolith i someone said it looks like seto kaiba's jacket from Yu-Gi-Oh, and i cannot unsee that it looks exactly like that and i think it's beautiful uh well i guess i guess this is where we're going to have to disagree a little bit i think i prefer the more subtle bricky nature of the xbox series x just because it's way easier to fit into my entertainment cabinet so if if you have space concerns then uh yeah you're gonna have to put a little effort into figuring out where the playstation 5 is going to fit into into your life but um, apart from that, Charlie, I, I, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth finding a place to fit this beautiful machine because, good Lord, there, there's so much here. I agree. There is a lot here, Jackson. And why don't you take your clothes off and tell us what's underneath? Take my clothes off? No, it's an expression like, break down the hardware, Jackson. <laughs> I thought you were coming on to me because of my passionate uh, celebration of the machine. Um, so to start off, I think I want to, I, I want to talk about the clearest improvement over the last console. And I think that's the controller. As soon as you take the controller into your hands, I think you'll know what I mean. It just feels so much better in your hands than the old, uh, DualShock 4. And, and it, the improvements only continue once you actually get into the games and, and, and feel it, feel it come to life in your hands. Wouldn't you agree? Oh yeah, I agree. I was blown away by the controller. I always thought that shit was going to be like super gimmickly, like this controller yeah. is going to improve your hand-eye coordination, massage you, make you more attractive, this and that, all these huge claims about a controller. I thought it was just going to be forgettable, but it actually is like some pretty high-tech shit. You said you can pretty much feel every footstep, and that's not an exaggeration. You feel like every action done in the game in the controller. Not just each footstep, but like they're localized to different parts of your hands, so you can really feel where you're stepping as well, if that makes sense. And what material you're stepping on in the game world. Like there's so much depth there. It's insane. You can feel arrows whizzing by your head in Demon Souls Remake just based off like the vibrations in the controller. And then there's also haptic feedback on the triggers, so you can feel the tension in your bowstring when you pull back the bow. It's it, developers have a lot of like tools here to really immerse players in the future, and I really hope that it's supported as much as I think it will be. Yeah, I could definitely say like with certainty the controller lives up to the hype. It is actually pretty pretty innovative stuff. Yeah, and, and it's and it's something that you really won't understand until you take it into your own hands and, and get a feel for it, because I agree with you, Charlie, like reading uh, the articles up to release, like hearing other people's impressions on the controller, you just get off thinking, this just sounds super gimmicky, you know, this just sounds like a fad, just something like the touchpad that'll be uh, maybe in a few of the first party games at launch, but then never used again. Yeah, like, your brain isn't ready for it until you feel it. Like, you can't wrap your head around it. It's like trying to process the duration of forever. It's just incomprehensible <laughs> until you actually hold the bad boy. I also want to add on here about the controller. I tested it. It has a pretty decent battery life as well, even with all this new fucking space age technology strapped to it. It lasts around eight hours, so that's that's pretty decent. Well, I'm glad that you stress tested it. I think it really is something pretty remarkable what they're able to achieve there. So moving on from the controller, how do you feel about the actual hardware of the PlayStation 5, Jackson? Are the specifications up to what you would expect in a 2020 next generation console? 
Uh, with any of the next generational consoles, like the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, they have pretty similar uh, hardware inside. And, and it does what it says on the box. It delivers that 4K60 experience, same as the Xbox Series X. And it does have that revolutionary SSD up in it, offering the lightning fast load times that they've been bragging about. And it does. Spider-Man Miles Morales loads to the main menu, I think, in about five seconds. And then you're in the game from the main menu in three seconds. I timed it. That's about eight seconds, if I'm doing my math correctly. <laughs> I think you're on, yeah. That's about eight seconds of uh, loading time. Uh, that's that's just that's super impressive. But then I also have another issue. I don't want to bring up too many negative points, but I, I want to be fair here. Even though we're we're like we're really loving the machine, this is a pretty clear negative to me. It only has 600 gigabytes of storage space, and you're going to use that up extremely quickly yes. with how how large uh, these next generational games are getting, like Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, I think it's called, is about 130 gigabytes. So you're using up one sixth of your storage space almost immediately with one game. So that is a problem to me and there doesn't seem to be any path to upgrade that at the moment. Xbox at least offers an additional drive that you can buy to add more storage. PlayStation doesn't seem to have that yet. And also on Xbox, you can store and move games onto like a traditional USB drive or whatever to then move over when you want to use them. That functionality does not seem to be on the PlayStation 5 yet from what I've seen either. So you're kind of stuck with that super fast 600 gigabyte drive. Hopefully they add further ways to, you know, increase that in the future. But I think that is a downside in my opinion. Hopefully the games can be the ones that change with the times. I think 150 gigabytes for a single game is fucking ludicrous. There has to mm-hmm. be a way to get that size down. Like that's, That shit is nutty. I hate that. Yeah, but until then, that yeah. drive is going to be used up extremely quickly. So that's just a bit of warning. I think we can move on to the UI, Charlie. What do you think? The UI is pretty much exactly what I expected. It's very reminiscent of PlayStation 3 and 4's UI. It's not super different. It's not trying to reinvent the condom or anything. It's all just very standard what you would expect stuff. It's functional. The only like difference I'm not a huge fan of is when I press and hold the home button, I expect to go to the home page as opposed to like get a bunch of different other options. So I I don't know, I guess I was just used to it being like hold home and you immediately just go right back to the start of everything. Now there's like one more step before you do that, which isn't a big deal, but just something different and maybe I'm opposed to change. I I think think if you do hold that PlayStation button, you do go home. You do go to the main UI. Is it it double tap maybe? Uh, Here, hold on, I've actually... I'm actually Try sitting it. in front of my PlayStation right now. We'll do some live testing here. I'll, I'll edit it down anyway. I, we want to get the facts in just to make sure we're not... <laughs> that's easily, <laughs> de- de- I've got easily some, debunked. I've got some big news, Jackson. <laughs> Is it surprising? I wasn't holding it long enough. Yeah, uh, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, it does, it does go back home. Um, well, this is, this kind of destroys our credibility a little bit. (laughs) Uh, okay, Uh, the the change must have been you hold it longer than you did on the PlayStation 4. Big, big So that that functionality is still there then, Charlie, so I guess, I I guess you can go immediately home. You're right though, the UI is pretty, you know pretty standard pretty great though i think all your games are there laid out in front of you so they're one click away which i really like you know that's that's good that's what i want from a video game console um that new game bar edition that you were briefly talking about i i've fucked around with it a little a little bit it seems like you can use it to get directly into certain missions in games like at one click of the button so i quite like that coupled with a fast loading time that's pretty good uh but yeah it's it's a pretty standard ui it, it works it does the job I like it. Yeah, the PS Store isn't fucking ass this time, which I like. It's it's. I read that it's built directly into the operating system, so it's not a separate app. You just it, it it's just one click, and then you're right in there. So you're able to buy seventy dollar games now at at the click of a button. So that's good. I just really yeah, like how, every, how fast everything is. That's the main thing I noticed. Is there is definitely. almost zero downtime doing anything on it. Well, I think, well, one of our big complaints, like our main complaint about Xbox is it having no games to really justify choosing an Xbox over PlayStation 5. Uh, PlayStation 5 has three exclusive games, all of which look fucking great. There's the Spider-Man, Miles Morales, there's Demon Souls Remake, and there's, of course, Bug Snacks, which you and I have been counting down the days for for the oh, last yeah. year. So I just really, 
I think that's just a huge selling point of the PlayStation 5 is when you get it, there's these three games immediately right there at your fingertips that you could get into and just start to enjoy. Your credibility is yet again destroyed because there's more than three. There's also Astro's Playroom. That's oh, four. <laughs> that's, and... a fu- that's a fucking showcase of what the game... No. PlayStation oh, Jesus, do. Charlie, you, you've played two seconds of it. You really need to play it. It is actually a full game, full at four hours worth of content there. It, it's great. For free. Built into the system. It's an actual platformer. I love mm-hmm. it. So yeah, it's. It. I highly recommend anyone out there who gets a PlayStation 5 jump immediately into Astro's Playroom. While you it, wait for it, Demon it, Souls to download. <laughs> yeah. That, what I got from it was just admiration for Sony because they really seem... Or PlayStation, I guess, because they really seem to care about their brand and the brand's history more so than I think Xbox does. With, with Astro's Playroom, I like all the little references and you get to com- uh, collect playstation artifacts from the past it just shows that playstation is really all about the games and i like that it is a very cute experience uh granted i'm not far uh, at all it, i was just using well, it as some, like a way to pass time till demon souls was done but it is cute i urge you to <laughs> reconsider your time and go back and finish it it's beautiful um and then we've also got Sackboy, a big adventure so from that count i think there's five exclusives on launch Wait, which Sackboy's is fantastic out? Yeah, Sackboy, a big adventure, another platformer. So yes, definitely out, out of the box, you're getting a whole bunch of software to jump into and play. And then you also have those AAA experiences like um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Call of Duty. So you still have those same experiences that you could... It, it's great. You've got a lot of content out of the box, basically, is what we're saying. Yeah, I think there's just a lot of value there. Mm-hmm. And as a final note, I think... Um, I'll just touch briefly on the fact that the console is super quiet. Again, you, you you don't hear the fan at all, not like the PlayStation 4. Every time you loaded up a game, it sounded like a jet was taking off. No longer, it's super silent and, and it doesn't overheat at all. But I, I was just really impressed with both, both of the consoles being able to achieve that uh, with all the power that they demand. It's good. Yeah, I I just look forward to when Xbox actually has games to have a more, like, apt comparison, because we don't see everything the Xbox Series X can do, because there's nothing, like, built around that kind of technology, whereas PlayStation 5 has, like, Demon's Souls now and stuff like that to really showcase a lot of the improvements. Demon's Souls and, uh, what's it called, Spider-Man Miles Morales in particular really feel like next-generational games because they're built around this entire, you know, PlayStation's power, the power in the machine. They're they're built with that in mind so they can really take advantage of it. Um, And they really really do a good job at that. Demon's Souls remake and Spider-Man Miles Morales both perform at 4K60 with with ray tracing, I believe, in Spider-Man Miles Morales. So you get some real next-gen features out of the box and it's it's really good really beautiful nothing like anything on previous generations really so super good is there anything else that we should mention with the playstation 5 because i really think that about covers it. it's a super solid console that you get a whole lot of bang for your buck with right away and you don't have to like wait four or five months in the future to maybe hear about master chief's wet fart coming uh, i mean i do want to end this off with a bit of positivity i think the next generation of video games is going to be really good because it's no longer shackled really by underpowered consoles uh, i mean we're seeing that with demon souls remake alone like that that game looks gorgeous so i I can't wait to see what both consoles are are able to deliver in the next generation i mean either way if you're playing on xbox or playstation at the moment you're you're kind of winning you you, you've got a good machine you've got a powerful machine that's that's all i completely agree um yeah so all up i think we're gonna give the playstation 5 a 90 that sounds right to me and the reason why it's so much higher than the series x even though like we don't have too many bad things to say about either is just because there is so much that you can do with the playstation 5 right out of the box whereas xbox is going to be a lot of waiting for those next gen titles to come out to it so i also just appreciate playstation went for more of a uh, next generational feeling like uh, straight out of the box you get a pretty new sleek ui you get a, a brand new controller built around the system uh, the system itself looks new which some would say is a flaw because it's quite ostentatious but it, it still feels like a next generational console I, I really appreciate that they're they're sticking to that whereas i guess xbox went for a more traditional not traditional but 
sticking closer to what they've already accomplished with their with their UI and and their controller. So you you kind of get that wow factor with the PlayStation Five that I think is lost on the Xbox. Yeah, I mean, I was definitely giddy to start this bad boy up. Um, yeah, so ninety out of hundred. Uh, like uh, again, the only downsides I can think of are the lack of storage and maybe the size of the machine. But those are pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I, I haven't spent as much time with it as you have, and I haven't taken it on as many dates or anything, so I, I really don't have anything negative to say about it. So I'm just fucking loving it. Alrighty, that, All that right. concludes our presentation. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye, everyone.